Coming up right now, stop working remotely and return to work or you're fired. The stance one company is taking and why they are forcing staff to choose. Also coming up, a man sets the record for the most tatted name, and this is not the first time he's held the title. We will tell you how many times one name has been inked all over his body. Ooh, a little bit later, a former CIA agent shares some safety travel tips because safety first, of course. Of course. Right. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. Hi, I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to an hour packed with Daily Flash goodness. You're going to love it. We're going to jump in the kitchen today. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Test kitchen. You want a test kitchen? And then um, we're breaking down breakfast, okay? Yes. And actually, uh, the whole origins might change the way you eat in the morning. So stick around for that. That's good. Plus, we're going to have some fun, too. Don't, no doubt about that. Always read the fine print, of course, right? <laughs> You've heard okay. that around yes, everywhere. Yes, of right. course. So there's this company, uh, this restaurant, it's called New York Fries, okay? And basically they sell like New York Fries and uh, hot dogs and that okay. sort of thing. Are they New had... York Fries different than French fries? I always wanted to know that. No, I, I thought the same thing. Okay. Apparently they are. Okay. But this company, which is even crazier, it, it, it's based uh, where this story comes from is Canada, okay? Oh. So they had a coupon that they sent out to everybody. Okay. It was a buy one, get one free hot dog, right? Okay. at New York Fries. You can go there and, you know, like on every coupon, you you know, the fine print on it. Yep. It had all the disclaimers and all the things, but then also it added, I'm going to quote it, it said, may not be used by Sally C., who went to Birch Church High School, <laughs> class of 2007. <laughs> wow. Somebody's holding a grudge. Somebody, right? <laughs> I, I, I want to know what happened. Oh, wow. Yeah, she me turned too. him down for, for prom or something? <laughs> That's or what I'm wondering. Yeah. On him, something. The whole story behind it. I, I would think like, okay, Sally C., if you are if you could prove yeah. you know, that you're Sally C., I would love for you to, to, it would be awesome to turn into that coupon and then see if they would actually deny it. Or just, hey, I want to buy you. Uh, let me buy you lunch, Sally, because I'd love to hear every, this story. Are they checking everybody's IDs that come in to make sure huh? it's not? I don't know. Does come in with a mustache? I, I, I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm thinking this guy, uh, I'm assuming it's a guy, has yeah. such a grudge that he would know if she walked <laughs> through that door, he'd be able to single her out. I love it, though. It's great. I'm going to start reading those fine prints. Sally, if you're watching the show, call us. We'd like to hear your side we of would. the story. We'll even buy you a hot dog, yep. okay? We'll get you two, since you got my one going for <laughs> Dating app Grinder. I've heard of it, never seen it, uh, never downloaded or anything. It lost nearly half of its staff after trying to force a return back to the office. In early August, the dating app ended its remote work policy policies and announced a return to office mandate. Now they gave workers two weeks to choose between ro uh, relocating to their respective hubs office uh, twice a week or leave the company and you get a severance. An insider said 80 of Grindr's 178 employees chose to leave. Many of them were workers, were hired remotely and were required to relocate to those hub cities. New York, Chicago, LA, San Francisco, Washington, DC. There are critics out there that believe the return to work policy was in response to attempt to unionize the company. So basically they said, oh, you're gonna unionize? Well, then you're gonna have to come into work. And so that, that made that could be possibly one of the reasons why. I saw a headline the other day in one of the business journals and it said 90% of the workforce will be mandated to return to the office before the end of this year. Do you feel it's different? I mean, we, we had to do yeah. this show remotely and it was a totally different vibe. But there is something about the connection mm -hmm. when you have and, and, and ideas flow seem yeah. seemingly and, and not you, as distracting. And you don't realize how much that office uh, environment feeds into other companies. The oh, local cafe down the street that serves lunch, you know, I anything like that. If you're going to get coffee in the morning, if you're working from home, you're not patronizing those kinds of companies. But also, like you mentioned, it's that connection, that human connection that I think everybody needs. If, if most companies have sales involved in them and it yeah. seems like deals can be made if you're sitting down with that person, mm -hmm. they can read your body language and that sort of thing. And if, I, if a sales staff, you say, well, we could just easily do this over Zoom, but there's something missing out of yeah. that. And I would imagine they would have more productivity knowing that you got to get up and you got to do something. And, and maybe on those days you're there, you're making the most out of your yeah, time. Yeah, too. exactly. It's That's the cost true. of those buildings too. Hey. My, my fiance mm -hmm. works for a major corporation in town with a giant building. And they we do. went in there mm -hmm. and it is a ghost town. There is no, she has to go three days a week. Even half the time she's there till noon and it'll be like, I'm on my way home. No one's here. Yeah. 
Going to Tolerable. It's weird. It's a whole new wor world. I would love to see. Going, I uh, appreciate coming yeah. into the studio yeah. and doing this kind of stuff. So, yeah. Well, a British dad has reclaimed a Guinness World Records title by having his daughter's name tattooed on his body 667 times. 49-year-old oh Mark Owen Evans originally earned the record for the most tattoos of the same name on his body in 2017 when he had his daughter's name Lucy inked on his back 267 times. Evan then lost the record in 2020 when American Deidre Vigil had her own name tattooed on her body 300 times. Evans then reclaimed the title by adding 400 more Lucy tattoos, 200 on each leg, saying that he couldn't wait to reclaim his title and dedicate it to his daughter. Evans said he initially set the record to celebrate the birth of his daughter and raise money for the hospital oh, cool. that cared for her during her first few months of life. All right, I like that story. Yeah. That. Well, and I'm glad it was his daughter because if it was a girlfriend or a wife, you know that, that marriage <laughs> or relationship was done. Yeah, that's what it's called, the kiss of death. A former CIA agent revealed her top tips for staying safe while traveling. 44-year-old Tracy Walter learned how to take extra precautions while on assignment in some of those most dangerous countries. Walter, she's now a Dallas-based professor. She shared her top tips for her safety in an Instagram video. Tracy researches is the area for any threats and sets up an app to alert contacts of her location in the event of emergency. When checking into a hotel, she opts to stay in a room located between the third and sixth floors. That's low enough for emergency access, but far up from an intruder who might be on the ground floor trying to enter, she says is the most accessible. And regardless of the floor level, uh, she bolts from the room and uses the security lock across her door as well. I mean, it's it's the world that we live in. If I'm going to take any advice, it's going to be from a CIA agent that's been out there, right? Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, she's definitely been through it enough. And traveling overseas, she knows what the uh, makeup of is a hotel room, the three to six floor right there right. in the middle. Don't get up too high because if the building goes on fire, then you're stuck at the very top. So. And, and imagine if I, and it sounds crazy, but she was probably in a situation where if it was a, 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 a building that's under attack, you know, it yep. would probably be more likely a little bit higher. So interesting stuff there. Well, we are celebrating an important holiday here at Daily Flash. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, it is National Smash a Can Day. And in honor of the holiday, Mitch and Matt are going to race to smash the most cans in 10 seconds. Now, while the guys are getting ready, here's some great stats on the number of cans that are recycled each year. Uh, for a single aluminum can, it could power a TV, believe it or not, for up to three hours. About 50 billion cans are recycled each year. Only 50% of cans are recycled each year as well. So it looks like we've got a long ways to go until we can really get the whole recycling thing going. But the good news is we've got the guys ready to smash some cans. We're gonna see who can smash so my, this is my plan of attack. I'm just going to just uh, use my right foot and go all the way down to be able to do this. Now, are we recycling these afterwards? Yeah, they just make with the smashy smash, and these are all from my house, so I drink a lot of fizzy water. That is a, that's a lot of fizzy water. <laughs> and you'll here. notice that this line, actually, Andrea, goes all the way around to the bathroom, so <laughs> this is, explains why Matt has to... It's actually, this is his sobriety test where he wants to hear. <laughs> uh, you want to take a guess how many you think we can get in 30 seconds? I'm going to guess uh, 10. Do you think we can get all 10 in 30 seconds? All 10 in 30 seconds. Is there any qualifications? Can it ha does it have to be smashed all the way to the ground? I think or it's going to be flat, flat, flat. No, it's just flat, 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 smashed. Okay, flat, flat, flat. All right, so you're gonna, are you going to give us the mark, good set, yeah, go? I'll, and James, you'll I'll tell us countdown. when we need to go, right, James? Are you guys ready? On your marks, get set, go. I slipped up on one. Line. I slipped up on that. This one I just I, I did, missed. Mitch first. finished first. first Jackson. Yeah, Mitch, you win the prize. You because because Matt he lost Matt one did. there at the very end. I think I finished, but I messed. But up. I messed up this one. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, recycling just started. Like everybody was going to recycle. So my dad, in the very back of our, our yard, in the back corner we would have thousands of cans like he would find them and and i'm like it was so embarrassing going up but you couldn't see it yeah. from the and then he would take it down there and he'd make like 20 bucks yeah. or something but it's 20 dollars in some states you can recycle them it's like a video game putting them into the machine oh that's cool yeah i think i've seen that yeah, before michigan and then well, there you go jackson I, we tried i think you guys did a great job i didn't break any style points for both of you mitch got through uh the uh the so extra line a yeah, yeah. little bit faster than than that I'm thinking we all need right, to take a trip to the going. Tin Can House in Houston. Jackson, we got more trendy news and entertainment. I would love 
to do something with all these on this first dance. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys, good job out there. Tin Can Alley here at Daily Flash. We'll stay with us. Still plenty more to come here on the show. We have got our cooking segment coming up. We're heading to the test kitchen to find out if this uh, herbal Coca-Cola remedy is really worth all the flash. Stay with us. We're back right after this. Hey, everybody. Mitch English here. All right, big quick question. Uh, anybody in here a bed rotter? Yeah. To a, you're, you're a bed rotter? Sure. You're, you're admitting that you're a bed rotter. Yeah, okay, well, that's a big thing. All right, I can agree with that. What is a bed rotter? And how is it affecting our younger generations? Well, we got to get an expert, and that's why we have Judy Wilkins Smith. She's author and motivational speaker. Judy, thank you, and welcome back to the show. How are you? Hi, Mitch. It's great to be back with you. You're in my favorite place in the world, so I'm always good. I love that. Okay, I'm intrigued. Bed rotter. Uh, we did a quick survey. Apparently, some know what this is, and some agree that that's what they are. I need to know, what is a bed rotter? So a bed rotter, and your person is going to correct me if they know something else, but as far <laughs> as I'm aware, a bed rotter is somebody who, who gets to burn out. They've had enough. They need the day in bed. They need to lie around. They need to not do anything other than snack, perhaps, and watch TV, and that's that. And it's almost like your what we would have called a mental day or a, a mental health day, a bed rotter. I love it. So Doing nothing much. My generation would call this Ferris Bueller, basically, where he just stays in all day but then makes a big day out of it, nevertheless. But he made his parents think he was sick. But a bed rotter, uh, you know, I, so I would love to know the difference between what is the difference between actually just taking a break and recharging and compared to what a bed rotter is. Because it seems like it's important to have those days. Am I right or wrong? It's important to have those days. We don't always uh, max them, though. This is the problem. So, so for me, I know there are bed rotters. And for your person who said, yes, I am one, <laughs> there's, an, there, there's what we call an alternative, which is a bed plotter. Okay. And a bed plotter is somebody who's going to lie in bed and they're going to think about, I just need, I just need to veg. I just need to not do anything. But at some point, they know they've got to switch back on. Now, you can do the bed rotting where you just sit and do nothing, but you can also do the bed rotting where you sit and think about what got me here right now and what might I want to do. In other words, what needs to stop, what needs to start. So it's almost like a reset. Okay. But a bed plotter means you get to go do the bed rotter thing and really feel productive about it. Okay, and it, and it seems like the technology that is around you probably needs to be a little absent or maybe not uh, absorb as much. Meaning like if you're sitting and watching TV, you're not really concentrating on yourself. Or if you're on your phone the entire time, you're not concentrating on yourself. Are there some tools that we could take when we bed plot? Yes, yes. If you're going to bed plot, really literally just take a pen and a pad. Or if you want to do it on your phone, you can take your phone and dictate into okay. that. And it's kind of just stream of consciousness, letting the thoughts flow. I don't want to be doing this anymore. I really don't want to be doing this. I wish I were doing this. Now, it sounds like we're doing from discontent to wishful thinking, but you're not. You're actually identifying what it is that's got you here and needing this in the first place and doing the reset and going, what do I really want? And if you follow that, you're going to be surprised by the wisdom that you have about yourself and what's important to you. All right, Judy, um, as a parent, it seems like this, this bed riding starts to kick in in their mid-teens, it seems like, you know? I'm just, I just need to decompress. Gosh, dang, let me lay in bed. But how can we actually motivate our kids or even Gen Zers altogether? You know, it's to show them that there's a really big game out there because I think for a lot of people, they feel like, oh, what's the point? Yeah. Well, the point is, once you begin to identify what you don't want and then you begin to identify what you really do want, that's when the endorphins kick in. You've always got to make the adventure you do want bigger than the adventure that you're stuck in at the moment. So motivating them is what's possible. What do you really want? What, what would you like to go out and get in the world? And you're going to still have some people go, well, I don't know. Well, bed rotting is a really good place to start figuring out that I don't know. And again, I would imagine just taking away the distractions so that they could do that sort of thing. And imagine what, what I, I've learned and what I try to preach a lot is it, the only way you're actually going to grow is to be uncomfortable. 
So, uh, you know, this kind of goes against a little bit because you're saying bed rotting and my bed's nice and comfortable. But if I'm uncomfortable in the fact of way my life is going, how do we break that pattern and then light the spark enough to where I go, all right, I'm going to do an inventory on myself. I'm going to take this time and I'm just going to relax and push everything else. How do I do that for myself or, or for advice for uh, maybe a younger yes. generation? Right. So what I say to people is, okay, you, you got the time to, to veg or, or bed rot and lie down and do stuff. Kind of segment that out into three different portions of, of your bed rotting day. Okay. Just lie there and do nothing and let your brain go. Phew. And then allow yourself to say, here's what I really don't like in my life at the moment. And write down your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions about that. Because these are patterns that are coming in and what people don't realize is some of them are inherited patterns. So allow yourself to veg, then you allow yourself to write down what isn't working. Okay. And then, then invite yourself to say, so what, what do I really want? We don't do that enough. We teach our kids and we teach each other that imagining or dreaming is really a fool's game. It's not, it's the smartest thing you can do. Yeah. So when you imagine that starts to kind of get a bit exciting. And yes, you're going to have to do something with that, but you've ignited the spark and you won't be stuck. Um, this is what I call how to never, ever, 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 ever again be stuck. I love that. And we all get stuck. And it's, you know, it's actually part of our development is to get stuck. We need to get stuck so that we can figure out a different way of solution, uh, have a solution for that. You know, this and so many other uh, topics that you cover in your book. Tell us about it. It's called Encoding Your Emotional Blueprint. And uh, where can folks get a copy of that? Okay, so it's decoding your emotional blueprint. They can get a copy of it any good book a bookstore that's around Amazon, um, Barnes and Nobles, any of those. And what it does is it shows you why you get into that funk or that that space of stuck. I love that. Yeah, stuck is the best place you could be because stuck means I'm now too big for this little box and I've had enough. All right. And, and so the book shows you very carefully how to get out of that, and then it also starts the spark. Very good. I said encoding. It is decoding your emotional blueprint. You can go to JudyWilkins-Smith.com to find out more information. Thank you so much. You always have such great insight and everything. I'm not going to just lay around. I'm going to be productive. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mitch. Hey guys, welcome to The Beat. First off, Doja Cat has done what seemed impossible by breaking the year-long chart-topping drought for hip-hop with her single, Paint the Town Red. She proves to us once again who the real queen of modern hip-hop really is by scoring the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. The Grammy winner, uh, Paint the Town Red stems from an upcoming album named Scarlet. This marks the first number one hip hop track in over a year, ending the longest chart break since 2001. Doja's new track samples a 1963 Dion Warwick hit, Walk On By, and this is Doja Cat's second chart topper, following Say So remix with Nicki Minaj back in May of 2020. Doja says she really enjoyed making this song because she had fun playing with her rap skills while giving us an insight of what's really going on in her life. And she will now embark on her first headlining tour this fall with support from Ice Spice, and that's obviously something you're not going to want to miss. In other action, we see J Balvin coming back with two of the greatest, J Balvin, DJ Khaled, and Usher. They got that beat to make your booty go crazy. I'm telling you, J Balvin has just revived Usher's 2004 classic, Yeah, on the new futuristic club-ready banger, Dientes. And Dientes, it means teeth, a body part that J Balvin asks us to show him about 90,000 times in a song of 2 minutes and 56 seconds. The at-home braces or teeth whitening kit that snags this song for their ads is definitely going to be cleaning up. And the video features multiple Balvins and Ushers dancing together on a light up disco floor, as well as DJ Khaled doing his very best on a DDR machine. And the end this is relentlessly catchy mix of genres with bold and unpredictable sounds. Some of that is because of the masterminds behind the production. The track features some of music's sharpest minds, including Mura Massa, Fred Ball, DJ, DJ Luyang, Mambo Kings, Tiny, and Michael Braun. The track started with DJ Khaled's gleeful ad-libs. Before the familiar synth beat from Usher's classic kicks in, Balvin storms in, rapping in Spanish. As the song pumps up, it's BPM and heads towards reggaeton territory. Eventually, Usher blasts in too, adding verses to create something brand new. And also in the beat today, speaking of brand new, we have to thank Justin Bieber and SZA for blessing us with this surprise collab, the new Snooze Acoustic Remix. 
SZA said she forgot to mention this to us. The acoustic rendition full of glistening harmonies instead of a more traditional revamp built around any new Bieber verses. The smoky video shows a glowing SZA and a shirtless Biebs laying together on a picnic or playing around at a crib. And we're expecting uh, SZA to share an expanded SOS album, soon featuring at least 10 additional new tracks. She also happens to be featured in Drake's new song, Slime You Out, featuring a 2012 Hall Halle Berry on the cover art and presumably destined for Drake's new album coming out this October. And a side note, Halle Berry was not a fan of that cover art. She wrote on social media that it was made without her consent and that she even said no to Drake at some point, but he still managed to drop the cover. And Justin Bieber is also pulling a double duty, appearing in Diddy's album, The Love Album, Off the Grid. Incredible work from all of them. And now that you're all caught up with the music, go listen to it and let me know how much you enjoy them. Thank you, Fabian. Now it's time to dive into some worldly known knowledge that seems like it's true, but is it really? I have a couple for you today. The first is a rumor that in the, in the early 2000s, singer Avril Lavigne was using a doppelganger to help her handle the struggles of fame, but the lookalike died in 2003, <laughs> and she promptly had to take over full time. <laughs> now we've heard about this a lot recently, most recently with the former uh, first lady, where somebody oh, yeah, steps in right, and all that. Yeah. So is it true or false? Uh, well, I couldn't see it being true. Yeah, I'm gonna say false yeah. on this one. Yeah, so I think false. It, she says it is false. Okay. She had heard she about was. the rumors, but she and did have a, fi uh, a fight with fame at the beginning of her career, but. Promises it was her. Do you know she started out actually doing country music? Really? Yeah, really? yeah. yeah. a lot of people forget that. about that oh, up there wow. in the Canada, and which a lot of people do in the career because country music has such a broad, uh, very uh, loyal fan base. But she did a very short amount of time, and then she found a skater boy. So and that, and that worked out. Skater worked out. voice. <laughs> uh, all right. Next up in Switzerland, is it legal to own just one guinea pig? Just one. Uh, I couldn't see why it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, yeah. I would think it'd be okay. So it is illegal in Switzerland to own just wow. one guinea pig. Why? Now Why they say the reason is, and this is their their you know politics over there, they are such social creatures that they believe just having one is considered animal abuse. Oh, interesting. Oh, just so they maybe they need two in order to be happy and survive. Yes. I got the same thing. We we just got cats, right? And and, little kid, and I was told first off, I said, all right, we'll get I, we're getting one cat. Well, you know that you need to. Yeah. So now I have two cats at their house, and uh, I said, all right, because I, I was under, I did it all under, you know, <laughs> duress. Duress, and I was like, I don't know if I want to. And I said, that's fine. I just don't want to have to clean up its kid yeah. uh, the litter box. And with Liza out of town, <laughs> no one thought like how yeah. they go. Well, you can hire somebody to come over and do it. I'm that close to getting some. <laughs> I did it yesterday. What, I don't know what these cats are eating. These things yeah. are disgusting. It's... And now one last one, real quick. Yeah. Is it official that NSYNC is going to return? Is that just a rumor or is it true? Man, I've been hearing a lot about oh, it. Oh, yeah. no, I, no, I'm gonna say no, except for one song. And it's off the Trolls movie. <laughs> Who all is coming back with them, man? Yes, well, it's officially uh, the NSYNC reunion for one song. It's their first song in 20 years. Chris Kirkpatrick, JC Chazé, Joey Fatone, Lance Bass, they are the joining Justin Timberlake. Only Justin Timberlake, though, is in the Trolls movie. Oh, I see. Uh, mm -hmm. They're changing the name of the band to Justin and Friends. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> right, we'll be back with more after this. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everybody. I am Mitch English. I'm Andrea Jackson. This is Daily Flash, your source for trending news and entertainment. Uh, Mitch, how are you with the um, sort of the shortcut version of words that Gen Z loves so much, oh, like yeah. sosh or prob or uh, nat? Bennies. Uh, Bennies. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, um, if, I understand, if I know what they are, if they're really close to it, like when see people say za, I'm like, <laughs> you know what? No. <laughs> No. I haven't heard that it's, one. You know, for no. pizza? No. Oh, dress no. Me. Yeah. 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 That Zah? bothers me. I want I want I go, okay, I get it. I see where the za part of pizza, but I want to know what the word is. Can't you just say pizza? Is that is it that difficult? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got natch for naturally. Okay. Totes. Totally. Totes, I've heard that okay. one. Okay. Uh sesh. Like sesh. a session. Let's do a sesh. Uh yeah. loves. Instead of I love it, you just say it. loves. La, la. Adorbs. Adorbs. I've heard that one before too. Uh sosh. Like let's it's like for like social? Social. Social, yeah. okay. Uh lates. 
Like goodbye? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm doing pretty good <laughs> so far. Soup. Right. Soup? Yeah, soup. Soup? It's like soup. Clam so like super. super. Okay, the way yeah. you say it, it says it. Yeah. Clam chowder. Clam chowder. Chillax. It means relax and chill, and chill at the same time. Probs. I got a problem? No. Probs? Probs. Oh, props. Yeah. Pro like, no, probs. Like P R O B S. Like pure probs? Probably. Prob oh, probs. Oh, see, I was wrong. I thought it'd be have problems. And, and sus. It's oh, no, okay. It's yes. It's so suspect, sus. right? Yes. No, the, my 11 year old does this all the time, and he kept on saying, This is so sus. And I'm like, <laughs> It's a TikTok generation. This is how they speak. I know. But it took me forever to figure out, like, I had to figure out what he would talk about. And then he would call me, he, he, and then all of a sudden I was sus, you know, yeah, that was real sus. And, and, and I'm like, I don't care. And then I would hear him use it in another way. <laughs> and I go, you little. Mitch, so, that's a new one. Like 20 years, you are very sus. <laughs> sus English. You're sus, Mitch. I'm very, it's a, Probs. It's like a sus, like it's perverted, like it's totes. like, or, what would be the correct? You're totes. totes. totes you're sus. Totes. Sus. Uh, it would be like you're you're sketchy yeah, in a sexual sketchy. kind of manner or something like that. that, that, that it's everything I've heard. It's yeah. like suspect. Okay. It's, uh, it's a little mm, sketchy. Together. Yeah. All right. Sketchy is fine. All right. Dating app Grinder lost uh, nearly half its staff after trying to force a return to the office. In early August, the dating app ended its remote work policies and announced a return to office mandate. They gave workers two weeks to choose between relocating to their respective hub office twice a week or leave the company with severance. An insider says 80 of Grindr's 178 employees chose to leave. Many of these workers were hired remotely and were required to re relocate to hub cities, including New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Fran, and Washington, D.C. Some critics believe the return to work policy was in response to an attempt to unionize the company. Now, I find it sus <laughs> that the company that invites, that, that encourages you to meet people <laughs> at your home is telling people to get away from totes. your home. They totes, right? Uh, I, I, I'm, I, I'm in agreement with, you know, and it was only asked, what, did you say two days a week? That yeah, they had that's to do? it. I mean, to, but it could be that for, for some people that it was just a, too long of a cold, uh, commute for those two days. But you also get used to like your office space. You don't want to mix things yeah. up and you're like, I want to do it. However, there is something to be said about working in a group environment with other people yes. and the energy that happens and well, comes from it. And I think too, when you're looking at work productivity, I mean, I'm sure some people are really good at home at, at keeping up with work and doing yeah. stuff, but there are others probably who are not that need a little guidance and supervision. <laughs> it has to be uh, very disciplined. I do that. And if it's a place where content needs to be produced, which yeah. I, I, I saw that I didn't, I guess that's what they, they do stuff like that. But uh, that's what the website's for, right? <laughs> Is they just it's make these little videos? Sus, for gr for grinding, sus. yeah. And a little sus over there. Uh, you, you are going to need a group environment to make sure everybody's yeah. there. And so if you're shorthand, I can see that big deal. This is true. All righty. We have so much fun waiting for you. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to have you join us. Uh, why don't you stick around? Because we got a whole hour packed full of good stuff yes. and we're not uh, done with it yet. No. We've got a cool segment coming up about breakfast. The, which the is going to surprise you. I history. learned something when we Me were too. talking about this in the meeting. So uh, we're going to see if you agree with it as well of uh, where breakfast came from and maybe give you a new alternative to uh, making your day better and starting off on the right foot. Give us some uh, ideas as well. Daily Flash returns. we got trending news and entertainment mm -hmm. right here. Don't you go anywhere. We're going to miss you. You do. Welcome to Healthcare 911. I'm Mitch English. There's a new way to help fight childhood cancer with one social media post at a time. Northwestern Mutual is promoting the hashtag Lemon Top Challenge all in honor of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Here's Stephen Ratke. He's the president of Northwestern Mutual Foundation. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and a lot of people don't realize that every day, a thousand children around the globe are diagnosed with cancer. Northwestern Mutual has been trying for over a decade to change that. And we do it primarily by partnering with a great organization, Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation. They're one of the premier funders of important pediatric cancer research. So to draw attention to the great work they're doing and show them support and build awareness, we've come up with something really fun and simple, the Lemon Top Challenge. All you have to do is take a lemon, balance it on the top of your head, take a picture, post it to social media using the hashtag Lemon Top Challenge, and if you tag Northwestern Mutual and Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation, we'll make a $10 contribution to Alex's up to a half million dollars. If you want to learn more, you can go to our website, northwesternmutual.com, and do the Lemon Top Challenge.
Oh, Mitch, sleep. We all need oh, more of it, right? Oh, yeah, more sleep. I know. However, it never seems like there's enough time for it. Dr. Karan R. is a top surgeon in the UK with millions of followers on social media. He recently shared his top five things that are ruining our sleep. Your sleep is being ruined by five common habits. You're having a big meal within two hours of bedtime. It takes 90 minutes for 50% of your stomach to empty into the small intestines. So the more full your stomach is, the higher chance of acid reflux, which can obviously damage your sleep. Ideally, wait two to three hours after your large big meal before you go to bed. Or chugging water right before bed. When you're asleep, the body increases the production of the hormone ADH, so it retains water and suppresses your need to pee. If you drink lots of water before bed, it can suppress the production of ADH, so you pee more and you wake up more and it ruins your sleep. You are sleeping in a hot room. On this graph, you can see our peak body temperature is around 7pm. After this point, the body temperature drops and we feel more sleepy and there's an increased production of melatonin. Basically, our body needs to become cooler to sleep faster. If you're having an alcoholic nightcap before going to bed, stop. Blue line shows what a healthy sleep pattern looks like with appropriate phases of REM sleep. Red line shows what happens when you have alcohol before you go to bed. TLDR, alcohol messes up your REM sleep. Finally, caffeine. This green thing is adenosine, the molecule that makes you feel sleepy, and it binds to this purple blob, the adenosine receptor. Caffeine, this orange thing, can also fit into the adenosine receptor and block adenosine binding to it. Caffeine doesn't make you more alert, it just makes you feel less sleepy, because it prevents the accumulation of the sleep molecule. Most people that struggle with sleep, you might want to skip the afternoon coffee. All right, Dr. R, thank you. Well, you're driving home and you think, well, why not treat myself? Sure. If this sounds like you, you're likely part of the treat culture. Inflation and out of control prices for everything from gas to groceries has many of us looking for simple pleasures these days. Maybe it's a latte, frozen lemonade, could be a lipstick, hand cream. You might even consider a cheesy reality show as a <laughs> okay. little self-indulgence. Experts say treat culture has the same feel-good vibes as retail therapy, but without the giant credit card, Hangover. All right. Every time I go grocery shopping, yeah. I feel like I have to have a treat. And I think that's also why, right, when you're checking out, there's all that food there oh. because you just grab yeah. it. But do you have, like, one thing where you're like, okay, it's my it's my treat. It's yeah. for me. Yeah, sometimes I like, in fact, when I drive home from the show, sometimes I like to stop at Starbucks and get a, a nitro cold brew. Those are good, actually. They're so I, good. I, that's my little treat. I would say when, when I do the shopping, yeah. I swing by and get me ice cream sandwiches. Ooh. And I think that's, like, my treat. But then the problem is is I have to hide them in the freezer. <laughs> so she doesn't know you bought them. Well, well that and, and uh, Enzo, my 12-year-old, will, we'll he'll, he'll, he'll find them. He'll yeah. find them. But listen, I don't mind. It, it, you know, it's it's there as a treat so that you can have it the other day. Exactly. So I think you're okay when it becomes a necessity and it's not a treat anymore. It's then true. that's the problem, <laughs> then it's right? That's the problem. You want to jump in? Speaking of food, you want to do <gasps> jump in the kitchen? Yes. All right, we're real excited. We're going to jump into the Daily Flash test kitchen mm -hmm. and learn more about your breakfast and how you can change it all up mm, in a good way. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Andrea Jackson along with Mitch English and we've got Matt Doolittle and we are in the test kitchen with Chef Yvonne. Yeah, Chef Yvonne is here. Hi everybody. Now this segment is all about, we find uh, viral videos of people making mm -hmm. stuff and so we test them here. Here on the show we actually have, when we have meals and stuff uh, put together, Chef Yvonne puts them together for us, and so we go, well, let's put her to the challenge. She can make some of these viral video uh, test recipes, and then we can try them out and see if they actually match. What do we got going on today? It involves a Coke, and it was actually called the Healthy Coke, created by Mandy V. Jones. But, Chef, it's called the Healthy Coke. Why and how is it made, and how is it healthy? I want to know. Is it healthy, huh? <laughs> I guess it's because it doesn't have all the calories and the sugar, although Coke Zero for me is my go-to choice, oh, okay. and it's healthy enough. But what she claims is that it tastes just like Coke. So that's what we're going to find out, and you guys are going to be the guinea pigs. Okay. Because to be truth, uh, the truth be told, I have not tried it. So. You're not trying it out. Right, yeah, right. so oh, let's right. go ahead and do it. Exactly. Yeah, we're getting into here. <laughs> it does concern So what do we need for this uh, recipe? Only uh, balsamic vinegar and um, any kind of sparkling water. So okay. here we have, you know, a regular brand so She's heavy-handed with that balsamic she's, she's vinegar. I know. I want you in my bar <laughs> like A double so, shot right Jamo there. So go ahead and pour it in. Okay. And it's, we got some real coke in here, so okay. you guys can either rinse your um, palate your palate out, or well, no, uh, you know compare if it really tastes like coke. Because this looks like again, coke. Right. It looks Imagine like we would kind of mix it up a little bit too. Yeah. It smells yeah. Go good. ahead, mix it up. Uh, yeah. This has had 633,000 mm -hmm. views, and uh, we, we want to know if it actually. It does? does, yeah, and it does look like oak. We got to give it to that, I right? Know. That, which kind of worries me, you know. Yeah. Give it a shot. 
<laughs> oh, God, no way. I can't. Oh, no. No? No. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and try it. I thought that is it. Oh, no. No, that is horrible. No, that, no not where even Where do you even get coke oh, out of that? Give me the regular. Yeah. All right. But, okay, I got to say, honestly, I oh. just tried it. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. What? I don't know if you want to try it. I thought it was going to be really, really bad. Maybe it's just I'll me thinking yeah. that uh, balsamic oh. vinegar is not but all that bad. But the smell is... It, yeah, it's, uh, it, it gets you like right here yeah, afterwards. Right it's because of that it vinegar. Is, oh. Right? You got the same thing. Yes. It goes right to you. There's a, a chaser if you need it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, you guys I yeah. actually think it's pretty refreshing if you want my... Wow, you're the one. <laughs> now, can you imagine like maybe if you take... Maybe just put a little... Uh, uh, maybe a little less. Yeah, and then where it kind of is just like, but then also then why don't you just get the Coke Zero? If, if you're going to want to do that, that sort of thing. But I nowadays know. with so many of these, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the sparkling, sparkling waters, waters, they water, come yeah. in so many different yeah. flavors mm -hmm. anyway. Um, I, and I remember the biggest trend, I guess it had been about, what, five, six years ago? Remember Coca-Cola and all? Bond's and, going for another No kidding, round. man. She's Apparently. She, she likes it. This is not Jack, I, I think it? I like it. <laughs> Actually, I'm really surprised. Really? Think, you like it? I actually like it. Do you guys like to dip your little bread in the balsamic yes. vinegar? Yes. Yeah. It's With all you can oil. drink yeah. soda. So I'm I'm gonna give it a seven. A solid seven. Wow. A solid no? seven? Okay. Yeah, try this oh, one. Okay. I put a little bit more water. Okay. And I think I mean it's not like Coke. That is I'll give it a zero point zero. But <laughs> no, here's no. my issue. Still no. Is but the when, lemon's nice. When, when I drink, drink uh, anything, I drink really fast. I would imagine if somebody made this, I had to drink I would drink this pretty slow and maybe curb that bad habit I have of drinking yeah. things really, really fast. That's it. I, I'm saying no at nope. what, one to ten? I'm gonna say I'm gonna uh, pass. one. I'm gonna give it a one because it looks like I, it. I think there's missing just a little bit of alcohol. And maybe yeah. that's that's the touch that we're that's missing on this. Solves everything. I love yeah. that idea. All right, thank you. There uh, very much, uh, Chef Avon. Hey, do you know that September is Self Improvement Month, and lifestyle editor Joanne Butler is joining us with three of her favorite things <laughs> to make your life a little bit better. Hey there, Joanne. Oh, hi. Thanks for having me. Well, I always say it's all about the little things you can do from the inside out to make yourself feel amazing. So your beauty routine is a huge part of that, whether it's a new lipstick or a skincare buy. And of course, who doesn't feel great when they have a good hair day? I know I do. Uh, and my little secret is always Pantene for that. It's just the trusted drugstore buy that gives you crazy salon-like results at home. And with fall coming between the new hair colors and the bleaching and the cuts and then all the damage from the summer sun and chlorine, when my hair is really in need of deep damage repair, I always grab this duo. It's their daily moisture renewal shampoo and Miracle Rescue Deep Conditioning Treatment. Uh, miracle it is. It repairs as well, if not better, than the leading $60 treatment. It's loaded with vitamins and antioxidants and just leaves your hair so soft and moisturized without weighing it down. So you can use it every day or in your usual wash day cadence. This is just high-end luxe for less all the way. Each of these under 10 bucks at Target. And you know, you can do a lot with that savings, you know, and just invest it in yourself another way, like a self-care trip to the spa for a massage, a manicure, a pedicure. You know, it's just uh, a lot of savings for no sacrifice at all. I just love my Pantene for good hair. Now let's talk about taking care of your insides. I am a proponent of supplements because sometimes what we eat and drink alone are just not enough. And right now the wonderful Refresh that makes really great feminine care products has just recently launched the Refresh Urinary Tract Health Plus Immune Support Supplement that you can get right on Amazon. And it's a daily that helps reduce the risk of recurring UTIs, urinary tract infection. And you know, if you've ever had one, they're no fun, very painful. So if there is a possibility of preventing it, by all means, help yourself. Uh, and evidence shows that healthy women who've had a UTI before reduce their risk of having another if they consume 500 milligrams a day of cranberry. And one serving of these, two caps a day, is 500 milligrams of whole cranberry fruit powder. Plus they have vitamin D and zinc for immune support. So it's really, it's an easy no-brainer to keep yourself healthy. Again, right now on Amazon. Uh, now our eyes are are an often overlooked part of our self-care routine. So these are fabulous for irritated dry eyes. They're BioTrue Hydration Boost Eye Drops. Just give you instant moisture and relief and help eyes feel hydrated throughout the day. Uh, and it uses a pH balance preservative formula inspired by the biology of the eye uh, with ingredients like hyaluronin, a moisturizer found naturally in tears, an electrolyte and an antioxidant. And you can find BioTrue pretty much anywhere at mass retail. It's fabulous. Now, 
Now, of course, you should keep your body hydrated too. You know, drink more water throughout the day. Uh, try some green tea a couple times a week. It's so good for you, just as good as water, and it's packed with antioxidants. Um, and make a few healthier eating choices, even if it's just cutting out some of the processed foods in your diet. That makes a huge difference in how you feel. Other things you can do, surround yourself with things that make you happy and feel zen like we did here. And just, you know, take 10, 20 minutes out of your day to stop and just breathe in through the nose and out the mouth and just think about yourself and how you feel in your body. I've, I've really personally been taking the time to do this for myself and it's made a huge difference in the way I approach everything in my life. I feel more focused and calm. Um, also nature, you know, take advantage of it. Get out there and walk. It helps you mentally and physically. Just get outside and breathe in some fresh air. Um, and really in thinking about all these things, the key is to keep it simple. Small tasks equal big rewards. I know sometimes when I feel like it's too big to tackle, I just give up on everything. So don't do that. Make little lifestyle changes each day to better yourself. And soon enough, you know, you take on more and more and it gets bigger and better. So that's really the key. You had uh, dinner last night, you got leftovers. We got breakfast for you. We'll explain and really give you some great options. All that's when we come back, right? Yep. Welcome back to Daily Flash. We are in the kitchen this um, day, having a good time too. Yeah, so we started thinking about how breakfast came to be. An interesting story because way back in the day, it's been said that what happened was you'd have leftovers from the night before and that would be your breakfast. So your leftovers uh, would stay in the ice box or whatever yes. and then that's what you had, which makes sense because things would spoil faster, right? This right? is long before the cereal companies came to be, but then when the cereal companies came into action, then things changed and people thought, oh, I can only have cereal for breakfast. All right, so we are giving an assignment to Chef yes. Yvonne. She goes, okay, well, you got to bring in your leftovers uh, from what we had from last night. Mm -hmm. And what, it, what did you have? I had some Cubans with some rice and beans, so I had a little rice and beans left over. Nice. Perfect. And I made lasagna, a big old thing of lasagna, Ooh. which you guys are welcome to. But so I brought in my lasagna from last night. I would love to see how you turn this into a breakfast, though. Right, so I got to say, disclaimer for everybody watching, Leftovers, you can just reheat them and eat them. I love leftovers. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to make them a little bit more look like breakfast, this is what we're going to show you. Okay. And I would say three key, three key ingredients you can go to. A piece of toast, eggs, and fruit. Oh, okay. You just add any of those three, and then you can that spruce it up and make it look like breakfast. Yeah. yeah, there you go. I like that. So let's start with your lasagna, Mitch. Ooh, Why don't you go ahead and reveal what it looks like? This is my... There oh, wow. Oh, okay. How so, beautiful. Over Aww. here, if you guys can see, we got a little lasagna. And what I did is lasagna toast. Oh, and so okay. just grab a little piece of toast, toast it a little more than what you would normally. I put a little bit of garlic, garlic to spruce up the flavor. Okay. Added some spinach to make your wife happy. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, she, she knows. And you know, so you made this look a lot better than really it did good. last night. Let actually. me just tell you, Yvonne is the most amazing food yes. stylist, and yes. Chef Yvonne earns it every single there time we do so, these And then segments. you guys also can try it, and so you wouldn't even really have to toast it. Mm -hmm. okay, it's good. I love yeah. how you added the top. It doesn't feel as dry as it normally probably would yeah. have. Oh, I, love it. I trust you. Yeah, I trust you. I'm going to eat a strawberry. I right. love the fruit and I love the spinach. And Quickly, what do we have yeah. Okay, so yeah. over here, you got some rice and beans. Mm -hmm. I think that you can add uh, an egg on anything okay. and it'll Pop make that it up. awesome. So we got <gasps> here Look some. At that. You guys can see a little oh, bit of yeah. rice and beans. So go ahead. Oh, with a side of tomatoes. I love that. And then you can try. Thank you. And then make sure that your yolk is. All right. Yellow, and that, so that way really you good. can crack it. I want to thank again. everybody for tuning mm. in for today. What's the Ooh. verdict on that? Mm. Good stuff. You did a great job mm. at Chef Yvonne. Thank you, Chef Yvonne. Thank, thank, thank you all for joining us. You can do our website, dailyflashshow.com, for more information. Y'all be good, and we'll see you when we look at you. Bye-bye.